Hey everybody, it's Scott PDX. Today is Saturday, January 12th. I'm up here in Tillamook State Forest at the Gales Creek Campground. And I thought I'd go over a little bit of my uh, truck camping setup that I use. I do a lot of adventures where I'm out riding motorcycles or hunting or hiking or doing a variety of things. And a lot of times I end up camping out of my truck camper just because it's simple and easy. And if it's just an overnight or so, it's kind of nice just to keep things simple. I've got a bigger uh, toy hauler that I use for bigger trips and uh, that's much more comfortable, but sometimes I just want to use this little truck right there. So we're going to go over some of the pros and cons and how I have it set up. There's no right or wrong way to do in a truck camper as long as you get out in the woods. Okay, so first things first. The truck is a Chevy 2500 HD 2017. Got a rack on the top. The canopy is a Lear canopy. It's got the... Uh, Extended top, it goes up uh, six inches. I think it's the model 180. Okay, so to start with, I carry this little step here. It's a little collapsible step that I use to get in and out of a truck camper. <clears throat> in this canopy, I've just opted for the simple basic uh, glass back here because it's easier to replace if it uh, gets scratched or broken. The uh, fancier glass backs are awful expensive to get replaced. So we'll take a look at the actual inside of the truck camper now. So I don't leave it always set up like this. It just happens to be the way uh, I had it set up from uh, camping a couple weeks ago. So I wanted this set up to be a modular setup that I can take down and set up depending on the trip that I'm taking. I mean, this is still, this truck is my daily driver. I use it for all kinds of other stuff. So I didn't want to permanently build in a bed or a platform like some other people are. So I still want to be able to use the truck for different things, for truck stuff. So uh, everything you see in here is pretty modular. Okay, so immediately upon getting to the back of the truck camper, I've got a couple of things that come in handy. Got a little paper towel holder and a light, as well as some chain lube and some WD-40. This right up here is some power options that we'll talk about in a bit. I have found these little Walmart uh, things real handy. They're just a couple of pieces of Velcro on a little angle and it just sticks and it's easy to keep things from sliding around. Now, the mat here is a uh, bed mat. It's actually made and cut just for this size truck. You can get them for whatever truck you have. And they're just real handy. You know, when you're crawling around on your knees, it just makes it much nicer. They have a model that actually uh, goes up on the sides here and, and all the way around it, but I opted just for the, uh, the uh, bottom piece itself. They're, they're quite nice. They can pull out and you can uh, wash them off, pressure wash them off. I always keep this little tub right here handy to get into. I've got some real basic stuff, some uh, oh, wet wipes, a two-stroke two oil mixer jug there. Uh, then I've got some two-stroke oil, some more chain lube, some bar oil for a chainsaw, some more oil, a couple gloves, a little beer cozy. And uh, just some other miscellaneous straps, as well as uh, a flashlight and some more bungees. Got another little step right back here. Sometimes I don't have the big step with me. Okay, so the big thing here is this cot. And what this is, it's a called a roller cot And uh, that whole cot there rolls up into a small duffel bag about 36 inches by about 5 or 6 inches in diameter. It's a uh, lightweight aluminum. The nice thing about the roller cot is that it only has two legs. There's one leg there and then another leg way up there. Uh, you can just see the outline of it there. The nice thing about that is that it will fit over the wheel well. Most cots have a center leg support and the center leg support means that it gets in the way of the wheel well. By having it straddle the wheel well like this does, then that means I've got some room to store some things underneath there. In a few minutes, I'll crawl in there and start pulling things out and show you what I have stored in there. you notice that uh, this canopy has a full insulation uh, kit on it with the carpeting and everything. It's, it's quite cozy in there. There's also a light going right there. I've got it uh, turned on just to add a little bit of light to the overall scene here. The slider windows on there are important because that gives you an option to get a little bit of a ventilation. And then the uh, I've got just a... Uh, a Teton, I think it is, uh, mat on here, and it's actually pretty comfortable. It's only a two-inch mat, but uh, I find that with the cot shape, you know, cots kind of conform to your back a little bit, and they're actually pretty comfortable. Okay, one modification that I did do the, to the truck that's uh, 
necessary if you're going to do much camping is to install an accessory battery. So on this truck, the Chevy truck has one main battery right there. This is actually the 6.0 gas liter engine. The, uh, the diesel engines require two batteries. And so this truck actually comes with a second battery space right here. There was no battery since I'm just the gas engine. So I added a second battery here. So you can see right here, it's real convenient since there's already a battery tray. It's just real simple to add in there. Now, the way I have it wired in, if we go over here to the main battery, right there, but there's this little device back there that is a uh, battery isolator that uh, I have wired in here. There's also a circuit breaker. You can't see it, circuit breaker is right back in there. So what happens is with the switch, then I've got the wiring that it runs all the way over the firewall and then back over here to the second battery. So when the truck is running and this battery is getting a charge more than the 12 volts, that switch opens up and the battery will charge the second battery. When you turn the vehicle off, the switch will sense that it's not charging anymore, will close that circuit, and then these batteries are separated or isolated. Now the advantage of that is that everything that I have under the canopy is tied into this one battery. So in a minute we'll go back there and we'll look at uh, the wiring that I have back in the back and you'll see that uh, you know all the wiring goes with this battery. Okay, so the advantage of having the uh, battery isolated is that uh, I can use all the power that I need in the back of the truck <clears throat> without uh, killing my starter battery. So if I'm camping for a, uh, a couple of days, I can be out here and relax, run my lights, run my uh, CPAP. <laughs> Unfortunately, I gotta have to have a CPAP to sleep. And that one battery actually uh, will get me by a couple of days. Uh, if I need to charge it up, I can just go for a little drive in the truck. The isolator will switch over and charge up that second battery. So let's take a look at what those connections look like. Okay, so this is the power that uh, is connected to that auxiliary battery that I have up front. It's just a little Amazon uh, deal. You can buy them in all kinds of configurations. I have a four port configuration here. This first one is a couple of USB ports. This one is a cigarette lighter port. And then this is the power switch. So hit the power switch. This one, I just got a little voltage thing on it. So right now it's 13 volts, uh, which is, you know, pretty good. You know, I just drove over here, so it should be well charged up. This 12 volt plug, I use it to run my CPAP at night. I'm sitting on the cot right now. You know, I'm leaning over a bit. There's room for the C CPAP up here, no problem. And I can also charge my uh, phone okay as well. See, I think I've run up to three nights before on my CPAP. I don't run a heated hose when I'm camping, and it's worked just fine. So that's the power situation. Let me turn that back off. Okay, so with the cot chair, I actually have a bit of room to hang out back in here. I mean, I've got, a, I don't know, a couple inches of headroom right here. I can't touch the sides. Uh, it's this this cot chair is actually pretty comfortable. You can't really tell, but I'm leaning back a little bit here, and, and it's pretty nice. Okay, what do we got here? So for the sleeping bag here, I just got a nice little collapsible pillow. I've got a heavy winter bag in here right now because the last camping trip I was at was sub-zero temperature, and oh, there's an extra little puff coat as well. So right now I've just got this little. It's an extra wool blanket here, and this little pad. This is just a a nice little fold-out pad called a truck mat pad. It's the same material that this uh, bed mat is made out of, and it's just a nice little pad to put down on the ground when you're uh, to stand on when I'm changing clothes or getting in and out of my uh, motocross gear. And uh, I just leave it on there because it just makes a nice little flat spot that uh, sometimes I'll have a CPAP or a heater or, or even a little stove if it's raining up there. So take that off, and, and now you're going to start seeing my uh, storage situation. Come back here just a little bit. So I carry these two bins pretty much all the time in the truck. Okay, so what's in this bin? So I leave this in here all the time. I've got some bungee cords, more bungee cords, some rope. Uh, let's see, I think there's a compressor down there. I've got a little inverter here. I kind of want to play with that. It's only 140 watt. Some basic tools, some paper towels. Uh, this is some motorcycle uh, patch repair kit. Just kind of miscellaneous stuff. I think in the bottom there, there's some uh, tire chains as well. This easy retriever just makes it a nice way to uh, 
pull things out of your truck bed when they're way up high. So for example, lock it down here. If I want to get to this uh, bin right here, I hook it and pull it right out. Very handy. Okay, so let's take a look at this bin real fast. Put my little handy chair there. Okay, so I call this my camp bin. What's in here is a, uh, a heater. It's a little black cat heater that uh, that actually will warm this truck camper up too much. But it's real handy when it's cold. Uh, some of you may know what that is. I'm not going to mention it. Uh, I've got an extra wool blanket. I've got a couple of uh, butane containers that work with this stove. This, this is an Iwata little uh, butane stove. But I got a, a hammock here. Got some extra silverware. Uh, some green containers. This is a little uh, ENO light thing. Gives you some nice lights. An extra tarp and a windscreen for that stove. So uh, that's about all that's in there. Again, this stuff lives in here all the time, so I've always got a, a blanket. And uh, the hammock is nice that uh, in the summertime I can always pull over and uh, have a little nap in the woods somewhere. Next thing I'm going to pull out is this bin. Notice this bin's a little bit shorter because it has to fit under the cot. When you lay on the cot, there's a little bit of a sag and you don't want to have the taller bins underneath there. Okay, so next let's take a look at the cook bin. Oh, it's so hard to do with one hand. Let's see, so in this bin, I've got uh, paper plates, got some utensils, Paper towels, more uh, spatulas. I always have some uh, spare zip locks. It's always handy to have. Let's see, some more cooking tools. Olive oil in the spray can I found is real handy. I always keep a couple of Mountain House meals handy. That's what I got in here. Sweet and sour pork, which is my favorite. Some granola. This is just a little thing my mom made that holds uh, some, some bags. Some spices underneath here is a nice cast iron uh, cooker. Some more cleaning stuff and a little bit of a uh, little coffee drink, barely. But this thing's kind of fun. It's a little chain link mail that I use to uh, clean the uh, cast iron. Let's see. So I've also got uh, a stove, a jet boil stove right here. I love these jet boil stoves for quick hot water. And then a uh, cook backpack and cook set. This is a uh, couple of bowls, a couple of cups, and a nice big pot that I can boil water in if I need to... Uh, purify water or I need to cook a soup or something like that. So that's my little cook setup. It stays in the truck all the time. Okay, also something you might find interesting. I've got a nice uh, bow saw that I leave in there all the time. It's, uh, you know, not a huge deep saw, but uh, it'll cut uh, processed firewood pretty good. In the truck underneath the seat in the back, I've got a couple of axes and uh, just some more uh, more truck gear. This thing here, <laughs> pull it out. I'm not going to open it all the way up, but that's actually uh, called a clean waste toilet. Actually a sit down toilet with uh, these special little bags that you use, or you can go out and dig a hole and uh, cover it up or bury it. Also back here, which is not really being shown, I'm just gonna tell you, I've got some uh, levelers back here that uh, just those little plastic blocks that you can level uh, your vehicle. So if I'm at a place that I can't really get level, I can just put those under a tire and kind of level it out, make it a little bit more comfortable sleeping. Alternately, I can put the levelers under the cot and just level the cot out, even if the truck is not level. Also, back in that corner, I know you're not going to be able to see it on the camera, I've got a jump pack, a little Dewalt jump pack that uh, it's my <laughs> third backup to be able to jump the vehicle, but it's also a uh, a compressor. So the next item I want to pull out is this thing right here, and this is a stove. And I know what you're thinking, if you're, if you're keeping count here, let's see, in the camp thing I've got a butane stove, in the cook box I've got a jet boil and a pot and a cast iron uh, pan, and then this is another barbecue. This is called a Cadet Safari Chef. This is just a nice little uh, outdoor cooker. Okay, so I decided not to open up the whole Safari Chef. 
needs to be cleaned from when I used it last time. But what it is, is it's a little three-legged burner that sits up about though a foot high. Uh, it's just a nice strong burner that I can cook the cast iron on or a, or a pot. It also doubles that there's a barbecue grate and a wok is uh, a lid that the wok turns into a lid. It's kind of an all-purpose fun little uh, cooking thing that uh, no point not to have. It doesn't take up much space at all. Okay, only other thing I have in here is just a little collapsible trash can. And just uh, some of the storage bags and stuff for all the uh, the cot and the pad and all that kind of stuff in there. Okay, so this was just a quick down and dirty look at my truck camper setup. Again, there's all kinds of ways to set these things up. This is something that just works for me, you know. it's uh, I needed something with some portability that wasn't so permanent. Uh, and, uh, you know, I use it as a truck also. So, hope you enjoyed the video and we'll talk to you later. Scott PDX out. Mm -hmm.